How can you utilize a golf lesson to actually improve your golf? Let's find out, and let's do it now. Because you see, I know that I lose my posture, and I know that I come over the top, and I know that this left elbow just keeps chicken winging. But maybe that's all part of the problem. Hello everybody, James Robinson here and welcome to the channel. If this is your first time watching my content, first of all, welcome to the channel. And second of all, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you leave. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how people don't get better from golf lessons, why people don't get better from golf lessons, and how you can utilize a golf lesson to actually improve your game. Today I'm coming to you from the beautiful Desert Springs Golf Resort here in Almanzora, Almeria, Spain. We've come out nice and early because well, it's still like 25 degrees and it's 8am. So we're going to try and avoid the midday heat. So guys, before we well and truly get started in this video, I want you to hit those comments below. Remember my videos are as much about you as they are about me and I want you to let me know who here has had golf lessons, who is having golf lessons, and who has never had a golf lesson? Because that would surprise me. That always surprises me how people won't spend a couple of pounds, a couple of dollars on a golf lesson to try and improve your game even just a little bit. It's far too early to go for this par five in two, so I think we'll just lay up. So you see, getting back to the subject that this video is about, how you can actually improve from a golf lesson, and, and I guess I could have called this video numerous titles because what it is, it's how to go for a golf lesson, how to accept a golf, how to have a golf lesson. You see, the biggest thing and one of the most frustrating things as a golf instructor, as a teacher, as a coach that I see is when someone comes for a lesson and they've already self-diagnosed what's wrong. They're, you're paying me to tell me what I should tell you because you're paying me to tell you what I should tell you. And it's not always right. Position A for the layup there. You see, and I always try and relate myself back in your position. So for me, I have been for golf lessons in the past, but I'm well aware that I'm paying someone to help me with my game and I'm paying for their expertise, for their knowledge, for their wisdom. Oh, the teeth. But when I hurt my knee and I went to the hospital to find out what was wrong with said knee, I didn't walk into the hospital and say, I've torn my meniscus twice in two places, I think the ACL's damaged, and I'm pretty sure that the kneecap's fallen off. Because that would have been wrong. Hope it would have been anyway. It sounded painful. So good in the air. Can you sort of see where I'm going with this? And I don't want this to come across as a rant because it's not, it's far from that. It's just something which I hope helps you guys in future when you go for golf lessons and maybe even inspire you to go for a golf lesson. Because you see, it's something that happens so much. And I love the fact that people are going out there to try and gain knowledge, to get useful knowledge from good sources and read up on things and, and actually get some information on your hobby, the golf swing. Because you see, there's a reason why golf instructors don't call swing faults, swing flaws, mistakes, errors, those very words, because they're negative. Call them characteristics. And everybody has their own characteristics within a golf swing, which works for you. Look at tour players. No tour player has the perfect golf swing, I guarantee you, because there isn't one. Because you see, if you come to me for a lesson and you say, James, my grip's all wrong, I'm gripping it wrong, I can't hold it properly, the grip's way too strong, and that's what I'm doing wrong. Okay, that's all fine and dandy. If you've played with Brett on a Saturday morning in the medal, or you've seen Bob at the driving range on a Sunday afternoon, and they've said, hey, are you playing bad because your grip looks really strong? We have to be really careful as golfers, not only to not receive bad advice, but to not give it. It's so easy to see someone playing badly and think, I know, I know the answer to help you with your game. Go and get a lesson. How have you stayed right? Oh, I think I need a golf lesson. Chris Ryan, I'll be in touch. And you may think that this just sounds like a little bit of a nag. You may think that it sounds like a rant, but trust me, it's not. 
You see, when you're playing with that person on a Saturday morning, or you go to the range with your mates on a Thursday night after work, and they say, oh, your grip just looks a little bit strong. Let's call it strong. But then what they don't see is your release pattern. They don't see how you turn your body. They don't see how your hips work and then you grip it like that because your swing coach told you to grip it like that because your hips work that way and you've got that amount of rotation. So then that's designed to help you square the club face up more often and help you play better golf. But in actual fact, what you're doing wrong is your weight transfer isn't getting through on time. You're not turning as you should. So then the ball's going left. But you've changed your grip. Hmm. This could be interesting. You see, the golf swing's made up of loads of different components, loads of tiny little components that have to work hand in hand to help you create a good golf swing and get a good ball flight. And if somebody who doesn't quite understand how those components have to work hand in hand in a perfectly wed couple to make that ball flight happen, tells you to then change one of those, it might not work. You see, if you're having golf lessons, speak to your instructor. I'm going to take my head off then. Speak to your instructor and ask him about the experiences that he's had with people for lessons, or maybe even people who tag along with people for lessons. Because I've had some shockers. Must be. Oh, too much. The greens here are absolutely perfect. And I'm sorry if this is maybe turning into a little bit of a rant because that's not the point of the video and there are actually a few exceptions to the rule on where you can walk into a lesson and start talking terminology and start saying what's going wrong. Let me explain. Say if you've been going to the same swing coach for a long time, you know the terminology, you know what you've been working on and you know and you know what you've been doing wrong when you're playing badly and you've got that trust element between you. To me, that's where you can walk into a lesson and say, Chris, I know exactly what I've been doing wrong. Please just clarify this for me and let's move on with our lives and improve it again. It's getting hot now. You see, but generally, if you come for a golf lesson with me, the first thing I'm gonna do is ask you a barrage of questions. I'm gonna ask you so many questions, you may even think it's a Spanish inquisition. It's funny because we're in Spain. And generally these questions are going to be open-ended questions. Tell me about your game. What happens when you play well? What happens when you don't play well? What happens to your ball flight? Is it a ball striking issue? Is it a directional issue? Is it a distance issue? Tell me about your short game. And don't worry, I'm not giving anything away here. These aren't like secret tricks of the trade. These are what all golf coaches and instructors will do because what we're trying to do from those questions is paint a picture. Paint a picture about your golf game when it's good, when it's bad, when it's ugly. I was thinking there's a film somewhere there, isn't there? Nice, easy gap wedge this morning, I think. Oh yeah. Love that. It's funny, you know, whenever I do a video on golf lessons or improving your golf, I always generally think about the lessons I'm having with Chris Ryan Golf. If you've not seen his channel, go check it out. What am I on about? Of course you've seen his channel. And then I always relate back to the video that I'm doing and what I need to do in my own game. And generally I start swinging better. So I guess the moral of the story is I need to do more videos on lessons. Yeah? Comment below if you want to see more videos on lessons instead of like 15 club reviews a week. Hmm. You see, because then generally from that picture that has been painted, what that instructor's then gonna do or what I'm gonna do is give you a plan, give you something to change, something to work on. And generally it comes down to two words, ball flight, unless you're in short game. I suppose you could still go ball flight, but generally ball flight. We're trying to improve your ball flight. We're trying to make it more consistent and we're trying to help you with what you want to improve. So guys, I guess what I'm really trying to say is please go into a golf lesson with an open mind, go into it thinking about what you want to improve, what you need to improve, what is going to improve your game, but don't go into it with a preconception of what you need to work on, what you think you need to work on, what Brett, Bob, Bill and Ben have told you to work on. Bill and Ben, the foul pot, man. Oh, you can tell it's getting hot. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't take that video as a rant. Take it for what it is. I'm trying to help you improve your game. If you are going to go for lessons, which I recommend you do if you're wanting to improve your game, please, please, please go into it with an open mind, just like I just said, because I'm repeating myself because it's got way too hot.
If you have enjoyed that, please make sure you do hit that subscribe button below. Make sure you comment below, are you having golf lessons? Leave a like if you enjoy the content, and as always, Oh, actually, massive thank you to the guys at Desert Springs, not only for the fantastic golf course, fantastic weather, and fantastic red wine last night, but also for the nice shirt, because this is amazing, and it's nice and Adidas number as well. So, guys, thank you so much, and as always, I'll see you tomorrow.